Good morning, everyone. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. My name is Keisha Jilks. I'm part of the diaspora unit. Uh, we're currently waiting on a few more people to join and then we'll get started. But thank you so much for being here this morning and we thank you for your patience. Okay, we're going to start now. So Foreign Secretary, Mr. Robert Prasad, heads and acting heads of Guyana's missions overseas, head of the diaspora unit, Ms. Rosalinda Rasul, president of the Roraima Institute, Mr. Floyd Haynes, members of the diaspora, members of the media, good day. It is my pleasure to welcome to you to this webinar. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation is delighted to host this meeting to update you on the activities of the Diaspora Unit following the conference in May. We kindly ask that you make use of our question and answer session that will follow Ms. Russell's presentation. Um, just so that everyone is on the same page, the program will start with an opening remarks from Mr. Robert Prasad followed by a presentation from Ms. Rasul. Then we will have the question and answer segment, followed by closing remarks by Mr. Floyd Haynes. Foreign Secretary Robert Prasad, uh, I'd like to hand the floor over to you at this time. Thank you very much. Let me confirm that everyone is hearing me. The audio player. Morning, ladies and gentlemen, um, particularly those of you who have taken time off from your busy schedule um, to join us here for this webinar. I know some of you would have requested that we conduct the webinar either in the evening or in the weekend, and certainly we will take that into consideration going forward with the other webinars that have been planned. But today's webinar reflects the government's thrust of accountability to all stakeholders and in this case, the global Guyanese diaspora, and that is to update you on the activities that we've been doing to enhance engagement with you, our valued members of the diaspora. But before we address the matters or the important subject at hand, I would like to address two um, critical issues. First, I would like to take this opportunity to express the president's and the government's condolences to families, persons who lost their lives 
in the catastrophic disaster caused by Hurricane Ida, and more particularly the Guyanese diaspora families who suffered losses, particularly in the Northeast area of the United States. We stand with the people of the United States who have been affected by the hurricane, leaving serious damage. And in certain states, particularly New York, New Jersey, Louisiana, Pennsylvania, and Maryland. Also, we're happy to see President Biden visiting Queens, as you know, which is home to a large Guyanese community and certainly committing his assistance in, in assuring that people are able to rebuild their lives and infrastructure damage in that area um, is also rehabilitated. The other issue I want to address has to deal with the recent agreement signed by the heads of delegation of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela and the opposition unity platform of Venezuela in Mexico City, and that was signed on September 6th. The government of Guyana firmly rejects the agreement of a sign as it pertains um, to our territory. This agreement is an over threat, an over threat to the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Guyana. Some of you might be aware our ministry last evening released a statement in which we stated, Guyana cannot be used as an altar of sacrifice for settlement of Venezuela's internal political differences. While the government of Guyana welcomed domestic accord within Venezuela, an agreement defying international law and process is not the basis of mediating harmony. The controversy between Guyana and Venezuela is probably before International Court of Justice and will remain there for peaceful resolution. Colleagues, I encourage you, members of the diaspora, to further familiarize yourself with this important issue. The historical context of the Ghana Venezuela controversy is available on the ministry's online platform for your per per perusal. Other material are also available on the said platform. Further, we call on you to bring this matter to the attention of the House representatives of your state, your senators, parliamentarians, and other representatives of government in the countries which you reside. We must lobby in support of our beloved land. Colleagues, this webinar is being held as a follow-up to Guyana's first ever virtual diaspora conference that was held in May of this year, which saw the participation of persons from the global diaspora close to 60 countries. Since the conference, the ministry has worked, has worked has been focused primarily on an analysis of the state of affairs of diaspora engagement and the development of both a strategy and structure to ensure the diaspora is engaged both through the diaspora unit of our ministry, as well as through our overseas missions. This, is anal this analysis was done through a series of engagement with members of the diaspora and diaspora groups and organization throughout countries in which Chinese reside. Based on the results of the analysis we conducted, a comprehensive work plan was developed for the remainder of 2021, and that will take us into 2022. To this end, measures will be implemented to ensure that there is sustained engagement in a holistic manner so that you can be integrally part of Ghana's development process as we move forward. This brings me to the point of, di of the diaspora engagement policy, which this administration, when assuming office in 2020, sought to update and utilize. And I wish to emphasize that we are guided by this policy document as we prepare budgets and develop work plans for the month and year ahead. In the coming period ahead, you can expect our government to work to ensure its relations with you are strengthened and engagements are sustained. You can expect a new diaspora online platform that will enable you to stay, to stay connected with us and always be updated on events, news, and opportunities in Guyana. It will serve as a key information and interactive portal for you. Also, we'll be soon hosting a conference targeting second and third generation young people in the diaspora. And in addition to this activity that seeks to engage youth, we will be launching a diaspora youth volunteer project which is being done in collaboration with the International Organization for Migration. Further, there will be more webinars that will cover a range of subject matters, business and investment in Ghana, health, volunteerism, information, and remigrating to Ghana, and a variety of other subject matters that are of interest to you. 
There will also be improvements to the consular processes at all our missions. And the list continues on what we'll be doing in the coming months so as, so as to assist you in staying in touch and connecting with Ghana and the developments that are taking place here. All in all, we will continue to work to ensure that there are well-functioning modalities in place to facilitate that diaspora homeland partnership to create an effective and sustainable communication conduit between Guyana and the diaspora to allow the Guyanese in the diaspora to be more involved in developments and activities taking place. I wish also to highlight that much of what we've been doing and will continue to do and the strategies we will be implementing are outcomes of our conference in May and the subsequent ongoing engagements we have been having with you. Um, the head of our diaspora unit, when her presentation, I've asked that she will elaborate in some of those areas. To all of you who actively participate in our events, please know that you play an integral role in the development of our activities and strategies going forward as we seek to involve and engage you uh, wherever you reside. I cannot conclude without expressing our government's appreciation to you for the support you provided us here in Ghana during the unprecedented flooding that took place early this year. And also some of you have, some organizations have also supported government in its response to the COVID-19 pandemic in terms of providing supplies. We received overwhelming support from a number of you individually and through diaspora organizations. And we wish to again record our great appreciation efforts and do look forward for your continued contribution in that area. Finally, you can be assured that our government is serious and remains committed to fostering your participation in the national development agenda. It's an exciting agenda and we want you to be part and parcel of that agenda. I wish to state that there's much work to be done and I seek your cooperation and sustained involvement. Once again, I thank you for your participation today and we all look forward to a successful webinar and to hear from you, your feedback and how it is that we can enhance and sustain the engagements, which is part and parcel of our government thrust in involving all Guyanese in the development of our country. Thank you very much and do have a successful webinar. Thank you very much, Foreign Secretary, for your remarks. We'll now move on to the presentation by Ms. Rosalinda Russell. Excellent. Thank you so much, Keisha. Keisha is a member of the Diaspora Unit, so whenever you call the unit or contact us, that's one of the young ladies that will be helping you with your queries. Just th thank you very much for your remarks, uh, Mr. Robert Passad, Foreign Secretary at the Ministry of of foreign affairs, distinguished ambassadors, council general, honorary council, diaspora group leaders, heads of agencies, local agencies in Guyana, members of the diaspora and the members of the media. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for this webinar. This is as a result of, as the foreign secretary said, many requests that we have received over the past few months on the activities of the diaspora unit, particularly since the president had spoken extensively on the importance of the diaspora involvement in Guyana. We are pleased this morning to present to you the activities of the unit post diaspora conference, and this will span a, a, a length of three months. So the presentation I'm about to show you this morning, which is a PowerPoint presentation, actually is, um, want you to bear in mind that it is uh, it is about three months activities. We will give you an update of what has happened over those that period of time and what you can expect coming forward. Afterwards, we're looking forward to a very, fruitful engagement with you in the question and answer segment. So bear with me while I share my screen. I trust all of you can see my screen very well. As you're aware, the Diaspora Conference took place on the 22nd of May, 2021, and it was the first of its kind and a very successful one too, with nearly, um, with almost 100, with almost 1,000 registrants on, on attending, uh, sorry, registering for the conference. What you're looking at on your screen uh, would be the breakdown of those who would have attended the conference, and according, this is according to the geographic 
locations of those attendees. As you can see, it, it actually tells us the extent, the extent of the work that we would have to do uh, post-conference. And so I'm very happy to share with you now the government's position on the diaspora. The fundamental premises that underscore government's diaspora engagement are that we recognize that they are investors, they are philanthropists, lobbyists, ambassadors of the country, they're marketers, they're consumers, there are people who have a great interest in Guyana. And so the government recognizes all of these qualities and uh, all of these capacities of the diaspora. We recognize also that they bring tremendous value to their home country and that there exists tremendous capacity, interest, and resources to be used in development. Therefore, the government wanted to include the diaspora in nation building, especially since Guyana is on the cusp of great transformation. It has created this buzz of excitement. And so what the unit has been doing is, is facilitating the interest of the diaspora in this transformation. But how does the government effectively engage the diaspora? There are five broad headings under which diaspora engagement has begun to crystallize since May's virtual diaspora conference. And I'm going to identify those five broad headings. One has to do with the identification of the goals. These goals are expressed in the thema different thematic areas, which were first introduced at a diaspora conference particularly in the breakout rooms. And these areas are economic inflow, trade and investment, youth engagement, sports and culture, human capital exchange and philanthropy, integration or remigration, security and tourism, socioeconomic development, data information and policy. So the diaspora unit will match these goals, the diaspora interests and resources. The second point is knowing and understanding the Guyanese diaspora. It involves us acquiring a better understanding of the diaspora relative to their location, their skills, their experiences, and what they're willing to offer, their interests, the peculiarities of the Guyanese uh, diaspora. Oftentimes, we are told about different models for engaging uh, the diaspora successfully, but we've often had to remind persons that Guyana is a very different country, our people are very different, and therefore we have to understand the peculiarities of the, our people in order to craft successful engagement strategies for them. And so the unit, you will see in the future, the unit will engage in mapping diaspora skills and location, which will be through our database and surveys that will be done. And, and we will be engaging in frequent meetings and activities with the diaspora. All of this in an attempt to know and understand the Guyanese diaspora um, better. And what we have done in the past few months is whenever we have these engagements, we've been listening to them to understand their interests and to understand what is it that affects them and how we can better serve the diaspora and to get them more integrated and involved in Guyana's development. Now, some of these undertakings, you're going to see the unit partner with external agencies and group, for example, like the IOM or the EU, um, which you will hear of later on, because these agencies have quite a lot of capacities and uh, experience from which we can draw, as well as the resources. The third point is to build a trust between the diaspora and homeland or the government. Now, this will be through cultural events, frequent uh, feedback and updates on activities and programs. It'll be through sports events, diaspora involvement in planning committees, events, uh, government's concession and incentives to the diaspora. This is basically in the remigration um, package that's been offered to diasporans who want to come back to Gaia. They are offering several incentives to various investors. Establishment of a unit to address the diaspora matters that this is completed. Uh, this is a unit that is currently engaging you at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And of course, consular offices whose capacities we will strengthen in the coming months. The fourth point is mobilizing the diaspora to contribute towards sustainable development. And how are we going to do that? It'll be through high profile events, promoting partnerships, twinning uh, the creation of networks and councils, um, integrating the diaspora and and policy implementation and volunteerism. We're also going to look to strengthen capacity and diaspora communities to work with one another and other stakeholders. And when we get down to some of the activities that we have planned, you're going to see exactly how that unfolds. So how did the unit begin implementing activity? Three primary functions of the diaspora unit. And it is communication, engagement and facilitation. We communicate with the diaspora and it is for that reason we began to reach out to as many of the diaspora groups and in the like. And following that communication, it is this it is engagement. 
So whenever we meet to these, with these groups, it is not a one-off meeting, but there have been constant reengagement on what we've, we have been doing and also what are the interests of the diaspora groups and how we can facilitate them. And, and that leads me to the third point, which is exactly like diaspora activities, interests, projects, and the like with the homeland. So for example, if there are the initiatives which the diaspora or a diaspora group or anybody to the uh, investment agencies or agencies that will give them the information to guide their investment process. In all of these engagement, the unit has been very um, clever and also very wise in how it's how it approached the diaspora. So it was post-conference that our, in, our approach to diaspora engagement was further defined. We were inclusive, non-political, professional, development or country-driven, transparent and results-oriented. And so those were, those form the, the basis under which the diaspora unit operated post-diaspora conference. But now you're going to see the practicality of the diaspora engagement on those pillars. So with reference to the meetings and other engagement, we have day -day diaspora groups, individuals, diplomatic missions, and state agencies and ministries. Reference to the diaspora professional associations, uh, charitable societies, religious congregations, and cultural and sports organization. To date, we have, and this is uh, when I say to date, we're talking three months, we have engaged over 50 different diaspora groups, primarily from the United States, the UK, and Canada, since these countries have the largest number of diasporans living there and the greater number, the greatest numbers of groups, basically. And I've have, I have on my screen here some of the groups that we have engaged over the past few months. I am not going to spend a lot of time with them, but just quickly scroll over to my screen. This is another set. And you will see all of these fall within those categories of groups that we that I mentioned earlier on. We also recognize the key role of our foreign missions in diaspora engagement and have been working with them over the past three months. The aim is to heighten their effectiveness and strengthen their capacity. So meetings were held with officials from the embassies and high commissions or honorary councils or consul general. And as we proceed with the work of the unit, we will look towards the strength towards strengthening the capacity of our missions to foster greater diaspora engagement since these missions are the diaspora's first point of contact in foreign countries. With, res with respect to state agencies and ministries, we have held meetings and um, engagements with agencies like the Environmental Protection Agency, the State, the Sea Defense Board, the Ministry of Agriculture, Marid, Guyana Lands and Survey Commission, uh, Guyana Revenue Authority, the Fisheries Department, Central Housing and Planning Authority, the Ministry of Human Services and Social Security, the Ministry of Labor, the Ministry of Health, Go Invest. With respect to private sector agencies, we've had uh, discussions and um, collaborations with uh, meetings with the Canada Guyana Chamber of Commerce, the Guyana Manufacturing and Services Association, and we've had a meeting with the Center for Local Business Development. All of these uh, would be to help in the buy-in for diaspora engagement and to facilitate the interest of the diasporans whenever they express that interest in any of the thematic areas uh, that they, you know, that is of interest to them. Now, for the month of September, we have several meetings planned for several countries. We are going to have our engagements in South Africa, Botswana, Nigeria, Ghana, and Mozambique because there are pockets of Guyanese living in those countries. Regardless of how, regardless of what the numbers are, we still want to engage them, and we are heading as global as you can possibly get. So we're not just going to center on some of the major uh, capitals, as we know, because of the great, because of the the numbers of the diasporas that are there. So we know New York, for example, has a great number of diasporans living there, but we're still going to reach out to those communities or those countries, sorry, where they are Guyanese present. So that includes countries like France, the Cayman Islands, French Guyana. Uh, we're gonna go to other states in the US like Texas, Florida, New Jersey. Then of course, we are, we're going to engage the diaspora in Trinidad, Barbados, and St. Martin. But these countries and states that you're looking at on your screen, those are the ones that are scheduled for the month of September.
the unit's participant, uh, we, the unit also participated in external meeting as part of its capacity building and also its engagement to, to get a greater buy-in and support from external agencies. So within the past three months, the unit participated in the regional thematic meeting on diaspora engagement. That was an initiative by the EU and its co-convener, CELA. The webinar focused on diaspora engagement in Latin America and the Caribbean. And Guyana was very well represented on that uh, webinar to the point that next year we're actually going to see the EU working with us to, um, to help build our capacity for diaspora engagement. We've also engaged and had a meeting, uh, we participated in a virtual fundraiser with the Guyanese Association of Manitoba, which is a province in Canada. They were raising funds um, for the flood affected victims in Guyana. Um, and so we participated, we gave them updates on what was going on on the ground. And that was um, the information that they'd use to help raise funds for the victims. And of course, we were invited to, to several special meetings by various diaspora groups that were in the US and Canada. And these were some of their executive meetings because they wanted to hear from us as to what we were doing and how we will uh, engage them further in diaspora, um, engage, in, in diaspora engagement. So with all of that um, as the ground work, what then were the evidence of the diaspora units engagement over the past three months of the since the conference so we've had so many meetings um over from from uh june july august and um now we're into september and persons will probably ask then what were the tangibles what were the outcomes and what were the evidence that the government was achieving its goal for diaspora engagement it was understanding its diaspora it was building trust and it was mobilizing the diaspora to contribute towards sustainable development and this is where we're going to show you or we are showing you what the outcomes were now this table that you're looking at shows the areas of interest for which various groups and members of the diaspora have expressed um, interest in working in so you're looking at here are sectors or various uh, thematic areas. And then you're looking on your right hand, you're looking at the area, the country where these interests were, are being generated. So we have um, commitments and proposals for projects in oil and gas, technology, sports, uh, services, uh, manufacturing, construction, food franchise, just to list a few. And what you're looking at now are actually specific initiatives that we have literally been working on over the past three months. So we've had um, a medical, we, we've already facilitated a, a group, a Canadian diaspora group uh, to talk to the Ministry of Health and they're gonna do a public outreach, a medical outreach, sorry, in region two later this year. We have, we already facilitated another group out of Canada who wants to establish uh, an orphanage and a training facility for at-risk young people. There's another Canadian diaspora group that donated uh, over 5,000 Canadian dollars to the flood relief efforts of Guyana. We've had a private diaspora out of, out of Canada that donated a container of sanitizing materials for flood relief. And there was a fundraising event for flood relief. And we're hoping that this will also lead to the procurement of laptops for a special project for the Ministry of Human Services. And this is undertaken by a Canadian diaspora group. We've discussions have started on a project to deal with non-communicable diseases in Guyana. And we will be having some meetings with the Ministry of Health on this project. We have commitment for the construction of three sports enclosures. And um, we actually have a meeting on this here this afternoon with the Ministry of Sports. And uh, there is a discussion also will get started next week on a program to help improve elderly care. And this is in collaboration with the Ministry of Human Services. Discussion will also start next week for a project in mental health. And this is a major area for which we've, we've seen a lot of interest being expressed by members of the diaspora. Um, we've already reached out to different persons also to talk about cultural development and sports development. And we've already reached out to one musician in the, in the UK, and he and I will have some discussions also on how we can promote cultural development um, between Guyana and, uh, and the, the Guyanese diaspora. Discussions have also started with various sports associations to provide donations for of sports equipment um, for the various uh, sports such as basketball, football, volleyball, cricket, badminton, darts, and table tennis. We had donations where we are through the diaspora, in particularly in New York. Donation were sent to CDC for um, for the national relief flood relief um, efforts. 
So we received donations, um, as you're seeing on your screen here, there was a container that was sent to Guyana of, with containing sanitizing materials. Uh, there was about 100 matrasses that were donated towards the flood relief efforts. Uh, over 11,000 US dollars were sent to the bank account of CDC to assist in the flood relief efforts. Um, we received, we learned of barrels of food items being sent, uh, religious organizations were involved in uh, flood relief efforts. And there was a group that came into Guyana in July, that might have happened. So being a little more specific in terms of the uh, the work the unit has been doing and the commitments that we've been getting the in for the investment, we have commitment for the construction of a state-of-the-art shore-based facility and training academy. Um, and the, we have commitment for the establishment of a high-tech park um, and a business incubator that's going to help uh, local companies and, and small businesses, particularly that wants to take their business up to another level. We have expression of interest in establishing a, a fruit juice factory, pharmaceutical distribution outlet, solar panel, salted fish factory, and modern poultry and pig farm. Discussions for these um, will start soon. We also have expression of interest for the development of tourism in Guyana. And, and what you're looking at, there are some of the commitments or some of the interest for zip lining and multi-destination tourism. Uh, we received interest for donations for medical equipment for hospitals. And we have received applications from persons who want to volunteer in various sectors. We're in the process of, of channeling those applications to the necessary agencies, which is why it was important that we do a lot of the groundwork and also to get the buy-in from various agencies and ministry, because when we get these applications, the unit of itself can't do anything with it, but we can facilitate those applications to the necessary agencies that will be dealing with it. We've had expressive interest um, for, from a person in Canada who wants to promote uh, tourism in that part of the world. Uh, we were also in receipt of a proposal for the security sector, and that has to do with law enforcement wellness programs and social initiatives that was already passed on to the Ministry of Home Affairs. Also, interests were expressed for a uh, block making business, uh, the construction company. And we've had several expressions of interest from sports development and at least two interests in training in the aviation industry. So what can the diaspora expect um, in the, for the remainder of the year? As a spin-off from the diaspora conference, four thematic focus conferences are slated for the remainder of 2021. And those are uh, the U diaspora conference, medical, a medical diaspora conference, an academic diaspora conference, and a trade diaspora conference. At the end of September, you're going to see a week-long series of webinars and um, with agencies central to making investments. And this is as a result of several engagements that we have held with investors. Many of them have visited my office and they've, ex uh, they've expressed some of their concerns or some of the challenges that they have experienced in making investments in Guyana. We totally understand that. But also, I have spoken to many of the agencies that are crucial to that investment process, and they would um, help us to understand what are their challenges and what are some of the uh, mistakes and errors that investors make. So we realize that there is a, a lack of um, accurate information out in the public, and therefore, at the end of September, we're going to have a week-long series of webinars to agencies per night, where these agencies are going to uh, present their mandate and the requirements for making investments in Guyana. That will help smooth out the process. And then what we're going to do also is to help facilitate them by having earlier meetings with these agencies so that investors can understand what exactly are the requirements and what are the, what is the timeline they're looking for whenever an application is tendered to that particular agency. There will also be a webinar with the Ministry of Human Services. I've had a, an, an excellent meeting with the Minister of Human Services where she outlined the needs of her ministry, the mandate of her ministry and, and uh, programs that will be coming up. She also outlined how the diaspora can play a crucial role in, in helping her ministry fulfill its mandate, whether it's through the provision of services, training, and uh, basic facilitation of some of these um, initiatives that she has. So we encouraged her to meet with the global diaspora and present this to persons and groups who has an interest in working with vulnerable groups, whether they be women, children, the elderly, uh, persons living with disabilities. So that webinar will focus on that element of development. And for each of the conference, there, there will be a, a steering or planning committee, and that'll be comprised of the diaspora members and locals, because we want to have the diaspora 
um, have a part of, of what's going on. Basically, this is all about them. Other initiatives of the unit. So the feedback that we receive from the diaspora conference has become a reference for the unit. The question and answers, and there were many of those, and general comments were helpful in guiding the unit on devising initiatives critical to greater diaspora engagement and facilitation. So as a result, what, what, we, what we will continue to do and what we are doing is we, we will establish an interim interagency work group for investors. Again, this is born out of our conversations with investors who have expressed their challenges and their need um, for, and they want to see the process be smoother and less time consuming. There is a single window project that is currently being developed, and that is like that will get uh, really realized next year, which is year 2022. That is why this initiative is called an interim agency, interagency work group. It's just going to be there for a while until that single window project comes in stream. So it will comprise of senior representative from the various agencies critical to investment, and they will, you know, collaborate with each other when it comes to an, a proposal or an investment, a proposal that or, or application of a particular investor that is before them. And if there are um, challenges to it, or there are, let's say an investor um, has not met all the requirements, then we'll be less time being consumed in the process. I'm also in the process of creating an investment process wheel. Uh, this again is born out of the conversation that we've had with, uh, with investors. And, and why am I focusing on investment? Investors is that we've gotten, like I said, a lot of in, engagements with persons who want to invest in Guyana and they, they made no bones about their, the challenges that they have um, experienced was, um, while they're in Guyana. And so the, the investment, who do you talk to? What are the requirements? It kind of like outlines a map that outlines the process for that invest local diaspora group, the Guyana version of it too, which will be persons who would have already remigrated to Guyana and that group will foster support and share experience of remigrants. Again, because of our engagement with such persons, we learned you know, that the remigration, the whole, uh, movement back to Guyana has not always been an, a smooth and easy one, and there had been many challenges. So what we want is for this local group to kind of give that support and share their experience with those who are interested in remigrating. And then, of course, we can come up with ideas and initiatives on how to make the process better. Uh, as the FS mentioned in his opening remarks, you will see the launch of the Youth Diaspora Program, which is a partnership with the IOM. We're going to give you more details of that when it's launched. We are looking also of having publication, regular publication of literature containing thoughts and perspectives of the diaspora on various issues, whether it's, it's unity or what it's investment, or you know, you're talking um, uh, social development, whatever the, whatever the topic be, is, where we want to have that input, that perspective from the diaspora, and then we want to put that into uh, literature that can be like referenced. And so we will we're we're having some uh, we've already started talking to persons who would be. Uh, part of the steering committee to overlook that process. And um, we have also received interest from various companies on digitalizing consular financial other services. And I know that this is a major um, interest for a lot of the diasporans who would like to see the process smoother, easier, and uh, more functional to some of their needs particularly. And so the paperwork and the time and the lines are not something that registers very well with our diaspora. So the We've got these um, proposals, and of course, we're going to channel them to the necessary uh, agencies for consideration and to see how soon some of these um, processes can be uh, implemented. In terms of communication, um, we want to have effective, sustained communication with the diaspora. That is why you're going to see the launch of the diaspora website, again, which the foreign secretary spoke about uh, that is currently under development. Now, the website will not be a website that rehashes news articles from all the different media, but what you're going to see is a website that's functional to the needs of the diaspora. So it will include information on various thematic areas, on events. It will create um, a, a forum or a platform for global networking, for data collection. It will feature the diasporans or different members of the diaspora and talk about their stories, their contribution, their successes. It will feature magazines from the diaspora because there are some groups that actually have some amazing uh, magazines, it is in a digital format. We're going to um, embed those into the website so anyone from any part of the world can understand, can read, and see what's going on in all the parts of the world with Guyanese. 
And of course, there are going to be information on government ministries and agencies, how to connect to them, who do you connect to, what are the, the, the numbers and what are the, the emails that you can write to write them to. Um, there will be forms for those who may have problems accessing certain forms or don't know where to access forms. There will be a live chat feature among many other uh, features for this particular website. Of course, at the same time we launched the website, so we're going to revamp and launch the, the Facebook page. And uh, we're also going to launch the e-diaspora magazine. Now, some of you who are on this call, this, this webinar would probably have already uh, spoken to our unit, our members of our unit who have already reached out to them to contribute to that magazine. I should let you know at this forum here that the magazine initially will be a 70-30 contribution with 70% coming from the diaspora and 30% coming from Guyana. We'll see how it goes and if that uh, percentage, that ratio needs to change at any point in time. And of course, um, for communication, we're going to engage with, uh, we're going to continue to engage with our foreign missions. Now, the diaspora conference, you would recall that His Excellency, the president had requested that we put the question and answers um, on the website for all to see. The unit did send out all the questions that were not answered at that forum. Um, and so we did receive the answers for them and we've compiled them in a very user-friendly format. So on the new website, you will see, we're gonna populate the new website with a flip chart containing the answers to those questions, a high quality booklet with a summary of the conference, uh, the full rapporteur's report and recordings, the video recordings of the conference. So all of that uh, material will be there for you. The diaspora strategy, uh, which I know a lot of persons had an interest in, you, I don't know how many of you are familiar with it, but for those who don't know, in 2017, a diaspora strategy paper and plan of action was developed by the International Organization for Migration, or the IOM. The document was subsequently updated in November 2020, and much of what is contained in that strategy is already being implemented. However, because we want people to um, to see what it, it, it contains, it's not a secret, it's, it's the, the strategy is there. We're going to post that strategy paper on the again on the new website and allow for feedback and suggestions. You know, we what where can we tweak? Um, what new ideas or initiatives we can implement? Because the 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 diaspora paper was done several years ago. Times have changed, situations have changed, so there might be new and innovative ideas of engagement. So for you know, how do we have greater engagement for tourism or uh, for consular services or for investment. So when persons read it, you have some ideas, we'll be more than happy to receive your feedback on it. Now, we want to also do things very differently and not just you know hearing from the diaspora and facilitating some of their interest in here, but we want to help uh, supplement their work and to make it even more effective and successful. So that requires the unit also to get on the ground in Guyana and to participate in the community and to hear what the community has to say. So we are trying different strategies um, on how to do that. We have begun to in facilitation of diaspora interest and we have commenced groundwork with local communities to better understand their needs and to assess the gaps that exist. Now, the information that we we get from these communities will be passed on or we supply to the diaspora group who are keen in socioeconomic development. And I can show you how this works. Um, the unit is currently engaging a diaspora group who is keen on developing a model using health, education, and agriculture to empower and transform several communities in uh, along the East Quarantine uh, Corridor. And if that model is successful, this model it will be replicated by the group in other regions. And so it, it gears towards empowerment um, of people, employment, and just really helping people to step up to another level, basically, in their development. We've already held a successful partnership with a member from Atla uh, the diaspora from Atlanta, and this resulted in a unit connecting that member with the Small Business Bureau um, because we wanted to bring information from from the Small Business Bureau and how persons can get registered and form a small business. How can they benefit from training and the grants that's been offered by the SBB? So when we when we learned that there were there were a group of um, persons uh, villagers out from Buxton and Friendship area that had an interest in that, we worked with the member from the diaspora along with the Small Business Bureau to get persons from that agencies to speak with them. And then from that, we were able to get a, a registration exercise. And I'm happy to say 108 persons attended that exercise and um, it's been so successful. 
that I'm told that we the next step would be to establish an incubator to help the villagers in the Buxton Friendship area. And so these are just like some of the models we want to, to replicate and some of the ways that we're partnering, again, with the locals and the diaspora to, to augur um, or to augment development in Guyana. So that is um, just what we've been doing in the past three months. And for those of you who would like to contact us, we have here, you can take a screenshot or just make some notes on that and how you can contact the diaspora unit, whether by um, email, WhatsApp, or you can call us at the office there. So I'm just gonna leave this on for a few seconds while you get that information, after which I'll hand you over to Keisha as we go into the question and answer segment. All right, I think I'm going to take this down and we'll stop sharing my screen now. I can always put it back at some point in time. Keisha, it's over to you. Thank you, Ms. Russell. Thank you, Ms. Russell. Uh, at this time, we'll open the floor to questions. I see that we have a couple of hands raised, um, so we'll jump right into that. Uh, please keep the questions short and concise, and we'll get to everyone as quickly as possible. I see R.S. Kudan. Second. One second, please. Okay, so what we'll do as soon as we call on you, please unmute yourself, ask your question, and then again, turn off your mic again. Thank you. So we'll start with R.S. Kudan. You had your hand up. That was the first time that I saw. Go ahead and ask your question. No? Okay. We'll move on to Jay Anthony. I'm calling names as I see them listed. Go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, is it good afternoon? Uh, good morning. Uh, I'm calling from uh, Connecticut, the state of Connecticut. I've actually been going back and forth to Guyana. Uh, two uh, questions. Um, how can someone become a member of one of these standing committees that uh, you're looking to set up? And the other question is, how can someone uh, offer their services, you know, volunteering to one of the state agencies? Um, my interest is actually in, uh, in uh, we'll call it human services, basically uh, assisting youth and um, reintegration with uh, uh, ex-prisoners and stuff like that. I just completed um, basically 28 plus years as a senior deputy commission, uh, deputy warden with the state of Connecticut corrections. So um, I do believe I have some uh, skill sets that I could uh, offer. I have been in communication with um, the prison services as 
as we speak, but I'm talking about like actually uh, willing to, you know, because I'm retired. So therefore I have a little more um, movability and stuff like that, especially with the youth and uh, at risk kids. I know that's pretty broad, but uh, that's something that I've been doing up here with at risk kids for over 26 years. And um, I actually want to start giving back to uh, the country of my birth and stuff like that. Excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Anthony. And we welcome your um, your interest in this here. What I'd ask you to do is to please send me your contact details. So that's why I put up our email addresses and our numbers. If you send me an email, we'll reach out to you and then we will get you to be a part of the steering committees, the one of your choice, and also to um, forward your interest to the necessary agency. We will we will facilitate that for you. If, if, if I might add also, um... Both Linda, and and that is a type of response that we are looking in terms of persons, especially those who have time and expertise, because as you know in Ghana we have various forms of human resources deficit, and as a country where we move into the next level of economic growth and trying to capture the opportunities, we are also putting a lot of emphasis on local content, meaning looking at how it is that we can engage and employ and utilize Guyanese more in this development process, not at the expense of foreigners or foreign investment, but rather uh, to supplement, to ensure that our people are given the opportunity to play a role um, once that opportunity is provided. And as you've pointed out, uh, you have a particular skill, a skill that is necessary and so needed. Uh, we would want to create that database and that is why sending the information to our diaspora unit will allow us then to channel to the respective ministries and the respective agencies. So I want to make that broad appeal to all those who want to volunteer. And, you know, we will probably have to set up a particular format where people will state their skills, the type of agencies, the duration in which they want to serve, when they can become available, so that when we engage the respective government agencies or even the private sector, uh, we can then have some level of um, specifics so that they can then contact you and to utilize your expertise. But it is a type of response, it's a type of support that we welcome. And certainly we appreciate that um, yourself, uh, Mr. Anthony, as well as others uh, like you who want to be involved. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to Andre Brandy. First of all, I would like to thank uh, you for your wonderful presentation. There's been a lot of work that you have done. I'm in Switzerland and my question is actually uh, follows the tales of the comments of the foreign minister. I would really uh, urge you to take advantage of the experts in the diaspora because there are a number of upcoming important decisions that the Guyanese government and parliament has to take, for example, regulation of the sovereign wealth fund, the NRF, decarbonization of the economy, uh, renewable energy strategies, sustainable garbage, plastic sewage management. I think all in these areas, the diaspora, for example, me living in Switzerland, working in Germany, can really help and maybe also open up avenues of financing that could help in really turning uh, some of these concepts also into reality. So uh, having a database with experts and their preferences would be really helpful and I'd be happy to help out. So that's my comment to this. Thank you very much. Thank you. I uh, will now move on to one second, sir. Uh, Janice Hall. Uh, Ms. Hall, please unmute your mic. We can't hear you. Okay. So I am, good afternoon. I think it's afternoon, yeah. I am head of a not for profit here based in the USA of Guyanese, we call ourselves, we are Gutsy Incorporated. We've been around since 2019 on the ground in Guyana. 
And now because of COVID, we've been doing virtual workshops with teachers and children and caregivers. We've just finished a three-day workshop with Guyana Virtual Workshop. And we have focused on getting the teachers and children prepared for returning in person to school. As a result of that, um, Region 4 has sent us a letter, Region 4 the, through the education officers to repeat the workshop in a couple of weeks. So we have gathered a lot of momentum. Despite this, I am unable to make contact with the Ministry of Education, despite the teachers reaching out to us directly. And Ms. Rasool, I've also been unable to make contact with your um, ministry. I've sent emails since your last webinar asking for a, allowing me to have a telephone discussion with you or a Zoom call. Um, and to date, no response. So while I like that you are talking a lot about engagement and communication, it's a two-way stream and we really need to talk with you. We don't hope to do work in Guyana. We are doing work that is necessary in Guyana right now. So just tell me how I can make contact and get okay. somebody Thank to respond. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. And you know what? Um, I want to empathize indeed. We have received complaints that it, diasporans have, have that they've been having a difficult time in reaching some of the key agencies. And that's something that we're working on. If you notice what I said um, when we were going to have the website, it was going to be a functional website where what we put up there will be exactly, uh, let's say, contact persons that will answer emails and telephones, basically. And um, one of the things we're doing when persons reach out to us and say we can't connect to, um, let's say, NIS or we can't connect to GRE or particular ministry, we, we don't just simply go on and look at a number or an email and just forward it to the person. We ensure that whoever we're talking to in those agencies are exactly the people who are going to respond to it. So I, let me apologize that you were not able to get on even to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, I know the diaspora unit specifically, uh, persons are being, have been able to get on to us um, very easily and very effectively. And for what re for every reason, that is why I've put my email address there, as well as the diaspora unit's email address, as well as uh, my, my number. I'm not sure which email address or number they would have used. That would be helpful, but it would be for you and connect you to the necessary agency and give you that feedback that you're looking for. Thank, Thank you, you for your response. Did you, did you manage to get hold of mine? Nope, I did sent you. Get, did you get? get no, nope. you still have not responded. No, no, nope. no. Yes. I don't. What, what? 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 Hold on. Where I did will, it come from? I will send me a different email address, and I will send you the okay. letter that I sent you on the 9th of July. No problem. Certainly. All right. Let me let me send that to you right now. Thank you very much, Miss Paul. Uh, we'll now move on to Mr. Ken Williams. Good morning. Thanks uh, for the opportunity. Hey, um, I, I appreciate the interest and, in, you know, one of the, and, and it's also good to hear the interest in the diaspora giving back, giving back and bringing our expertise. Uh, and I, it was refreshing to hear the young man talk about his, um, his expertise and his retired status and willingness to come back and give to Guyana. So uh, I have a PhD in cybersecurity. I'm an educator for over 15 years, 40 plus years in the industry. Education is my primary focus. I've got a, a numerous amount of uh, colleagues in academic environment who are just waiting and willing to give back and to assist. I've been surveying and as a Guyanese, I've been acutely interested in contributing to the educational advancement of Guyanese. I've worked with a few individuals in the University of Guyana and Kurukul College, et cetera. And the one thing that I would certainly like to give back is the educational upliftment of Guyanese from grade school all the way to academic environment. I'm an, I'm an executive director for cybersecurity. I'm a, I'm a business owner, et cetera. Uh, designing programs through grade school and academic environments. So allow individuals like myself to, to help to shape 
because the fundamental challenge that Guyanese will have in this new era is education literacy and technological um, uh, comp competitive um, you know, uh, contribution. If we as Guyanese cannot stand in the world stage and speak at this literacy level, we're never gonna be able to, to make an impact in what we do. So yeah, I think I've shared my email with Keisha. And, and like I said, I willing and willing to bring educators, academic individuals in on, on any level of, of engagement that needed to be not for a specific educational gain, but to just to give back. I'm working with several countries, Jamaica, um, Barbados, there's individuals all over the world who are looking for expertise like this in STEM. And if you're interested, Rosalina and the country, just reach out to us and we'll be happy to assist. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Williams. So I'm glad you said you left your email address with um, Keisha. We'll get it from her and we'll send you an email so we can begin the engagement to identify. And Ms. Hall, I put my alternative email address in the chat box. So if you can please send me um, or forward me the email, I'd be very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now move on to Mr. Errol Ganpat Singh. Um, I, I am at the moment in the UK and I've been stranded here. I go, I go back to Guyana very regularly. I've been investing in Guyana and I am often met with um, uh, public officials who are not qualified for their jobs, who just make life very difficult for me. And I try to explain to them that I am investing in Guyana. I haven't even taken up any of your, um, your proposals for, for um, tax e exemption and that sort of thing which I will be doing, but I am still investing in Guyana. And I, I just wondered if the government can say to all public officials that if they aren't qualified for the job they're doing, the government should offer um, training and, uh, and a commensurate um, remuneration to encourage them to be professional about everything they do. So when the diaspora is trying to help Guyana, we meet professional people who are as enthusiastic as we are for helping Guyana to become the very greatest country of the Caribbean, which, which can happen very easily if we have the right attitude of our, uh, of our um, public officials. That's it. Thank you very much. We'll move on to Mr. Peter. Right. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good evening. Or, uh, uh, my name is uh, Peter Amreka. I'm chairman of Guy Health UK, um, an organization that's been in existence for several years. Um, I'm really, really very pleased uh, in what I've just heard and the presentations which have been made. Um, I think it's the first time that uh, when there is uh, talk about the diaspora involvement, we've actually seen real uh, evidence of that being so. Uh, there are lots of aspirational things that have been identified and we're pleased to know that they will be taken forward. The engagement from the diaspora unit has been excellent, first class. Uh, we have had good response, uh, continuous response, and we look forward to working and to uh, bringing our skills, our experience, our contacts uh, to Guyana so that uh, the benefit of all the Guyanese will see uh, the efforts that is being made to involve um, the large numbers of Guyana, 
Guyanese throughout the world. So thank you for all that has been done and uh, we look forward to the continued uh, support and cooperation as we go forward. Thank you very much for those kind words. Uh, we'll move on to Ms. Ruthie richards Levi. Hello there, this is Ruthie. Um, I just wanted to say that I thought it was a very good presentation and uh, very interested in doing whatever we can to assist in any way. But uh, I also wanted to, to mention that um, I wanted to send around a, a message to everybody actually that um, I don't know if those of you who know uh, Father Derek Goodrich, Rogers Cathedral from 1957 to 2001. Um, and he did many, many great works in Guyana and continued to do that after he retired, uh, leaving his pension there to help youth and uh, uh, destitute mothers, all, pe all sorts of people. He left, he, he left a lot of money to help a lot of people. He's just died and it'd be very good if anybody's got any memories of him to uh, send an email or send some sort of uh, message to the family because um, he did many great things and he gave us most of his life was was in Guyana and he even won the Golden Arrow Award for, for um, his services to the country. So it'd be nice if somebody from the uh, consulate or the High Commission would attend the funeral also. And that's it for now, but I'll be, I'm happy to help you in any way. That's it, thank you. And we would be grateful if persons could put their, their emails and contact information as well um, in the chat box so we can have access to it and we can contact you. Sure. Ms. Richards, I would love for you to, to put yours, so we will definitely reach out to you on that. Okay, cool, will do, thank you. Thank you. We'll now move on to Mr. Amar Ram. Yes, hi, good afternoon. I'm calling from Canada. Um, I got a comment and uh, followed by a question. I just came back from leading an exploratory trip with a Canadian delegation to Guyana about two weeks ago. Um, I would like to provide my unsolicited feedback on the effectiveness of the diaspora unit. Every appointment booked was, um, it was fulfilled. Every time we attempt to reach out to the diaspora unit, it was done in a very effective manner. I also want to uh, express how <clears throat> encouraged I was to see, <clears throat> excuse me, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the friendliness of the Guyanese people. I left there about 30 years ago, and the last time I visited was about 12 years ago. And I was so touched, so moved, so encouraged. And what I see there is a young Guyanese generation who's looking for partners, for mentors. There are several offices you visited where they're willing to help, and they're also willing to learn. So my encouragement to my fellow audience who are residing outside of Guyana is to embrace the young people who want to make Guyana better and see how we could uh, be part of the solution. My question, in your opinion, how would you rate the readiness of the relevant government agency? So for example, one wants to come back and invest and they have to go to a specific government agency. How up to speed are they to facilitate um, the request? And I hope the question makes sense. So thank you for that question, Mr. Ram. Um, one of the, admittedly, one of the major complaints that we did receive as well, apart from the, the issues with investment, would be the difficulty or the challenges agent, um, dias, the diaspora has had in contacting ministries and um, our officials from the ministry. So what the unit is doing is that, and that we are reaching out to those ministries and we're getting them involved in the actual engagement so that they can experience for themselves and hear for themselves the challenges that persons in the diaspora has had in the past to reach to them and the cost 
to the country when basic communication have not been reciprocated. We have heard of, unfortunately, of projects being, of being lost, of skills um, that we could have benefited from um, being withheld because, you know, simply because they could not make contact with, with various persons. I can tell you right now, because of the re-energizing um, of diaspora interest and the government's commitment to that, we are reaching out to all of the agencies to help them understand the importance of the diaspora and to get them connected to the diaspora. So what we're doing, that's why we're facilitating meetings with the, the various ministries and agencies directly. So they don't necessarily have to come um, engage us, but we would have, um, let's say if somebody comes in, we, talk, we link them directly to the, the particular ministry or state agency so they can have that communication. Currently, we are. Um, we would have a meeting, and the foreign secretary and I were discussing this with all the permanent secretaries of the various ministries to bring them to one forum where we can share with them the challenges of the diaspora in contacting those ministries simply by you know by phone call, by email, and to get measures in place that would enable effective communication with those agencies. Perhaps a point person in that ministry that'll be solely responsible for that level of communication. So we are doing some amount of work with the various agencies to help them to be a little more prepared. That's what I can tell you in our engagements with them so far, at least those that we have dealt with, we are beginning to get that support and the buy-in from the various ministries and agencies. So if just give us a little more time and we will definitely open up the communication and make it a lot easier between the diaspora and the various government agencies. We are working on it because we did get that feedback. Thank you, Ms. Rasul. We'll now move on to Ms. Sharita Hickinson. Good afternoon. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Hello? We can yes, hear you. Can hear okay, sorry. My apologies for the mask because I'm in a public place, but. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Prasad, Ms. Gilks, Ms. Ms. Russell. Thank you so much for having this follow-up conversation. Um, the initial um, diaspora meeting was really wonderful. So I'm really glad to hear all the progress that you've had in the last couple months. Um, my name is Sharita Hinkson. I'm the president and founder of an organization called Gold Rush. And Gold Rush is um, a youth diaspora organization for Guyanese abroad. My question is in regards to um, a slide that you had earlier regarding a partnership between the IOM and the ministry um, about the launch of a youth diaspora program. I wanted to know if there is space for um, input from young Guyanese abroad or if that is a partnership that is going to be largely between the ministry and the IOM. Okay. All right. So perhaps before, I can answer that. Yes. Yeah. I was going to yeah. say the foreign secretary is going to answer that. <laughs> yes, because uh, I know we're, we're looking at time constraints, so I'm just trying to move the program forward without much formality. Uh, but just to answer your question, this project is intended to be a pilot and then to be rolled out in a very wide, in a wide way involving the Ministry of Youth here. And yes, there will be scope for young people, young youth organizations in the diaspora, but the, the target group at this point in time is North America. Uh, um, and certainly in the wider catchment, once the program is rolled out and we've uh, worked um, and satisfy all the necessary requirements to the IOM, because they're doing it as, as a test to ensure that we tweak it well, and then it will be handed over to the respective government agencies. But the aim is to um, bring young people who want to um, volunteer. I don't know if many of you, how many of you are familiar with the Peace Corps? Uh, in the U.S. Uh, and the volunteer, there's also was a volunteer youth corps also, whereby persons would come and spend six weeks, two months, work with a, either private or public sector agency, give up their service, especially during their university break, where it's spring or summer break, and, and also to explore the country a bit, to give up their skills, and we hope through those initiatives to get them back in terms of be much more engaged, because we don't want to lose the second and third generation of Guyanese. And so we have to find creative and attractive way and innovative ways of getting them back. And this is one such. So certainly partnering with other organizations, the opportunity will be there. Um, the steering committee is meeting, I think sometime later today. And once they would have all the modalities in place, you will be um, in a position to receive much more information to see how it is that you can 
uh, move, contribute and to support this, this type of, of endeavor. Thank you. And I, and I should let you know, Ms. Is actually one of the members of the steering committee to plan the UDIS for comments. She's not about that. Thank you for that. We'll now move on to Mr. Fazal Hamid. Hello, good day, good afternoon, wherever you're from. Um, like I said, my name is Fizal. I run a humanitarian group that does work in Guyana, the Caribbean, Africa, and North America. First of all, kudos to the government for this great initiative. I mean, it's this diaspora unit. I was in Guyana, and by the way, awesome presentation, uh, Rosalinda. I was in Guyana in June. I had a short window, and I wanted to meet somebody in the government in, in part of this unit. I picked the phone up and called. And within a matter of 10 minutes, I was able to book an appointment and get to see, um, meet with the diaspora unit within the next day. Now, I must say the, uh, the website in the magazine is, is, is awesome. Realistically, how soon do you think it's going to be up? And for people who might be frustrated not getting on here and there, as I said, give it time. This, this, this unit, I think it's, it's very good because information I needed that was taking a year and months to get you can literally get it now within hours. And I think that is a move, you know, that, that is progress and that is in the right step. Keep up the good work, guys. Thank you very much. And um, the prototype for the website has already been developed and we we're just about um, populating it with content. And so we're looking to have a launch in perhaps within weeks. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to Leland Lucas. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, FS um, and colleagues. I'd like to take this opportunity to, may, to not only commend the unit on its work so far, I know there are lots of growing pains as we go along, but of course, there are no perfect systems. I would also like to take this opportunity to make a plug for the University of Guyana and the fact that we need access to qualified um, personnel who can teach um, and assist in research. I was happy to hear the presentation from Mr. Williams. I'd like to advise everyone that UG is not the place it used to be. COVID has been a blessing to us in some respects in that it has moved us to the point where we are now offering many of our classes online and going forward, I think I can speak for the vice chancellor when I say that our classes will continue to be online, um, hybrid, and in some instances, face-to-face. -face. And I think that's extremely important for the diaspora because what we are saying is that your contribution to the University of Guyana does not necessarily require your presence in Guyana. And so I would like to make that plug on behalf of the School of Entrepreneurship and Business Innovation and also on behalf of the entire University of Guyana. So thanks for this opportunity and I look forward to the assistance of the diaspora unit um, in helping the university to build its human capital requirements. Thank you. So, Mr. Lucas, if I may say a few things to that. Um, thank you so much for that uh, comment. Um, it is duly noted. I did have a, a very good meeting with the Vice Chancellor of the University very earlier on, and we did have some commitments of how we're going to assist the university. Um, as a result of that, you would have noticed we said that uh, coming up is a, an academic conference. So the academic conference, like every conference, is intended to have the same um, uh, the same and results. It's the same model that we replicated for different thematic focus conferences where we're going to bring all of the diaspora that's in that particular discipline. So calling all Guyanese in the academic field, whether they're the professorial level or their teachers, their curriculum developer and experts, wherever they are, the, 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 the conference is intended 
to bring all of those people together in one firm along with the local authorities so we can discuss, we can share ideas um, on how to make the system, the sector more effective and efficient. And what we're going to have out of that conference would be a group to have to monitor the results and the, the commitment and, and um, how well we're, we are achieving what was pledged and committed both from the, the side of the diaspora as well as the side of the policymakers. And so it is intended with these thematic focus conferences to exactly what you're saying there, to bring the skills and to bring the, the level of resources and assistance that are needed in the various sectors. Definitely UG is on the program and uh, we will be uh, engaged in the diaspora along with the universities, how best we can make it work and take that university up to um, a level that we would always want it to be. And I do appreciate um, your commitment. Thank you. So what we can do, Mr. Lucas, again, if you put your email address in the chat box, I will contact you because maybe you can serve on the Guyana end for the, that particular steering committee, as well as Mr. Williams, but I'll get some information. Uh, well, if he puts his there, I'll definitely contact him afterwards. Well, I have sent my email address directly oh. to you. Yes, I got it. Um, Okay. Thank you. Okay. My regards to the minister, please. Certainly. Thank you. Hi. Thanks. We'll move on to Karen Lambert. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello. Hello. We can hear you. Hi. Hi. Um. I am working from home today, so I'm not quite presentable. But um, I would just like, um, by the way, um, great initiative with this um, diaspora, um, you know, this diaspora initiative. I'm very happy about it. Um, as a person that has been going to Guyana for almost 10 years doing medical missions, I was able to observe a lot of areas that needed, you know, medical attention. Um, my main focus is oncology. Um, I always do workshops when I come down. Um, most recently, I started working in clinical trials at um, New York Presbyterian. And um, I am interested in the medical diaspora, bringing more information about oncology to Guyana. And not only that, I would like Guyana to make oncology a focus. My observation is that there are not a lot of oncologists, Guyanese oncologists. There is oncologists, but they're from other countries. And I think it's something that need um, more attention in the university. Um, I, I need more medical students to uh, making that their specialty. Unfortunately, cancer, um, you know, it's very rampant in the US. It's a rampant around the world. And every country need to um, not only make uh, awareness an issue, but they need to have it in their curriculum to have more um, medical personnel in that field. So um, those are some of the things that I would like to bring to the medical diaspora, making oncology uh, a topic, not only a topic of discussion, but make it more a focus on the university uh, curriculum I had several discussions during my last mission last month. I was in Guyana last month and I spoke to many medical students and I was able to get a few of them to come to make oncology their specialty. And this is a message I would like to um, continue. So um, it's something I could discuss further. I know we are limited for time, but just know that um, I'm here as an ambassador in the US um, working with CHAIR. I also work with um, Memorial Sloan Catering and I'm presently doing cl clinical trials with New York, uh, New York Presbyterian, New York Met uh, Methodist. So um, I would like to introduce clinical trials to Guyana, and it's a this is a meeting I need to have, and it's a discussion I would desperately need to have with Guyana just to move Guyana forward in the medical realm of oncology. Um, thank you for listening, and um, have a good day, everyone. Thank you very much, Ms. Lambert. Point noted. Again, please put your email address in the chat box and we will um, engage you and take yes, this part because I'm very much interested in what you're, what you're saying there and we'll, we'll help you to reach yes. the right 
um, persons to make that happen. Yes. Yes, I did. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Well, let me unmute. <laughs> All right, there is an Antonia Lola Dickinson. I believe she was having some internet connectivity issues. Is she on the call? If not, we'll move to Imam Ali. Hello everyone. Thank you very much uh, once again for having this uh, wonderful program. Uh, the webinar, you know, in connecting from the conference is uh, unique and uh, the other meetings we had between. So I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Prasad and Mr. Sewell for the wonderful presentations today. And uh, sometimes I feel, um, you know, you might be thinking um, we're here to present our resumes. Um, many people are wonderful reaching out and saying the areas they can connect with. And I think... Uh, one of the problems with that is because um, we cannot uh, continue to be connected um, with the right areas. And uh, while you, Ms. Rasul, you've been trying uh, above and beyond, um, when you pass on our information to the areas, um, it seems to basically um, vary. And uh, we need to find a way, and I, I know you said the website will help with this, but while we're waiting on the website, um, you know, for those of us who are reaching out, if you can kindly connect us or let those people directly connect with us in the areas in which we'd like to, to help. Um, I'm really excited today because all those who have spoken before me and are interested in helping had nothing to do with oil and gas. Um, it's all about services, and I think, uh, you know, um, this is extremely important. You know my take on this. Um, we, we really need to help our fellow Guyanese um, build, uh, you know, on their uh, social services and other areas of their personalities, which will, um, you know, allow the generation um, to build on, you know, the, the richness of uh, Guyanese hospitality and uh, everything else. So I'm really excited um, that I was able to join and be invited to today's program because um, I see the richness of those who have spoken before me and their interests. And I hope that we can continue to offer these services. Many of us who are willing to go beyond um, just needing the connection. And uh, we thank you, Ms. Rasul and Mr. Passage for um, helping um, you know, facilitate this to the various ministries and uh, hopefully we'll be able to continue this uh, great work. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Imam. Uh, we'll move on to Mr. Wayne Ford and then we'll take a question from the chat. Yes, good afternoon. And Thanks for the update, Lord Linda. Wonderful presentation, very comprehensive and informative from you and um, Foreign Secretary. My question here is a follow on to Ms. Janice Hall, and it has to do with resources. So, in the interest of sustainability and effective diaspora engagement going forward, can you describe to us the structure of the organization and the budgetary allocations for fiscal year 22 or this year to keep the diaspora unit working sustainably with the right resources to respond to over an estimated 1.5 million Guyanese if 10% of us decide that we want to get involved in various ways? The second part of my question is for the um, Foreign Secretary, who indicated that there was some research done with results that informed um, a program or a change of program, um, a comprehensive work plan. Can you tell us possibly where we can find the results of that study 
formal and formal for a series of engagements and the comprehensive work plan. And secondly, you indicated that there's a policy document uh, pertaining to the diaspora. I'm aware only of the remigrant policy uh, that has about three pages or four possibly. Can you tell us when, how, or where we can find the rest of the diaspora policy engagement design um, for the other relevant areas of diaspora engagement, which will be tourism, capital investment, direct investment, um, return of talent, and the combination therein. So those are my questions. And the last thing here is, in terms of mapping skills and creating a database, can you assure us of the security, the storage, and the retrieval of such data when Guyanese input any type of personal or confidential information. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Ford, I just got the last part of the first part of your question that dealt with the budget, but um, there was something you talked about uh, sustainability, which I didn't get clearly. Do you mind just saying that quickly for me? And I'll address both the budget as well as the first part. I missed the first part. Oh, all right. Yeah, I'm talking about the in the interest of longevity of the of the unit. Okay. And in the interest of sustainability of the unit, with the right resources and capabilities, what are the budgetary allocations to do that? And can you describe how it's structured at this point in time to deal with those of us in the diaspora and then possibly all the other diasporans who might want to get involved or get information and in the process. We know that it's a unit and it's not a ministry by itself. So what are your capabilities right now, the number of personnel and the hierarchy of, of the structure? So, so just, just really quickly on the two points that you mentioned, in terms of the budget, um, we have submitted a budget there. Unfortunately, until it's approved, I will not be able to say what is the, the final amount allocated for 2022. But we did take all of that into consideration, the sustenance of programs, but not just from the government budget, but also creative ways in which it can, these programs can be sustained. So all of that we're already factoring. When we do get the approval, then we'll be um, in a more conformed position to give that sort of information. Um, so that, I guess, we'll tackle it. The unit has, like I would have mentioned earlier, we are we do have our staff and they have been working um, from since the, the conference to current. And again, we are making provisions for the, um, the strengthening of the unit as well as increased capacity. Now, I made it clear when I came on the post that we only wanted a few persons to start with because we were, we were going to understand the diaspora and then we were going to build. And as the workload becomes more expansive and demanding, we are going to increase the capacity of the unit. That has been agreed upon. The ministry has been very supportive of that. And so we are considering that for the new budget again. So as soon as we get our proposals and we get our confirmation as to our, our, our share of the budget, we'll be sure to share that with persons. As you can see, we've been having these engagements ever so often where we are um, given the information as is needed. So um, we, again, like I said, once that, that is confirmed, we'll certainly share that with you. So you said uh, mapping skills database and you're looking at security. Now, if you look at the presentation that I did, I said in the foreseeable future, we're going to do that. And you're quite right. I agree with you. Data security, that's critical. That's important, which is why we have not as yet activate anything to that effect to take anybody's data. So, of course, we'll want to engage with the necessary persons to ensure how we secure the data, where it's going to be, what formats it's going to take, all that definitely has to be discussed before we actually get down to the database. Because if you notice, the database has not been featured um, as a priority in any of the, in this presentation here, because we do have to work out some modalities and take several factors into consideration because we totally understand um, the need for the protection of data. And again, once we're, we're going to have engagements on that, we're going to talk about it and when that is all ready, we'll definitely um, give that assurance to the diaspora that once you get your data in there, it's going to be secure and how that is going to play out. Uh, so that's that. Um, I know you mentioned the 
policy document. And again, you broke up for me a, a little bit there because I think it's my internet that's a little bit unstable. So it caused a little disruption there. Uh, you mentioned you saw a remigrant policy, but you're inquiring about a policy document. Did I get that correctly? Right. Um, Mr. Prasad indicated a couple of things, and one included the policy document that exists. I think he, that's what he implied. And I'm trying to find out where we can find that document. And if it doesn't exist, what stage of the seven steps uh, for designing a policy document is that document at right now? Uh, so, and what areas of diaspora engagement does the policy um, um, uh, refer to? Yes. Um, Mr. Ford, yes. I, that, that's a very important point you've made. The International Organization of Migration has worked uh, for two or three years in conceptualizing a strategy um, slash policy document. That has gone through um, thorough review, um, both by local as well as international experts. And we have used that as a broad guide, as an outline um, for our work. We intend to, once cabinet has finalized that particular policy document, we intend to have that uploaded and be made available to all stakeholders. But as we're going through the different stages in terms of getting the buy-in and the approval, uh, we have been using the broad parameters as guide of our work because we cannot wait um, and the diaspora, yourself and others, are very anxious um, in contributing and being involved and being aware. Uh, so we've been a, moving on a twin track. So that document has been finalized and we're just awaiting um, its approval, consideration and approval um, by the cabinet. And once that has been done, um, certainly it will be available uh, to stakeholders. But uh, to address your point, yes, we've been using that broadly as a guide. Thank you. And if I may just ask again, you indicated that there is a comprehensive work plan. I think that's what you're referring to. Do you know where we can find a copy of the comprehensive work plan, bullet points, or the infrastructure for that? Well, th that is a work plan of the unit I was referring to. Um, what it is that we're seeking to achieve this year. A lot of that flowed from the May uh, virtual conference that we had. Uh, whereby we saw stakeholders' involvement. And then we've been having segmented consultations with groups out of Atlanta, New York, Canada, different parts, Texas the other day, um, different regions, wherever we have the diaspora. And as we get that type of input and suggestion, we have been constantly being adding and, and enhancing and making much more relevant the work plan of the unit as such. But once uh, we've been able to finalize and as we move into 2022, we'll have a bit more structure in terms of making that available and, and as it's constantly being updated. But as you can see, it's a unit that is very dynamic and we want to ensure that we're flexible enough to that based on what stakeholders and others like yourselves um, and others who are part, participating here, uh, we want to ensure that their inputs are considered and as much as possible catered and actioned as we can as we move along. Thank you. And the last question, I promise is the last one I've done. The last question is, many countries have, well, 24 or 30 countries have diaspora ministries, including India, Israel, Philippines, Mexico, China, and I can go down the list. Many other countries have sub-ministry levels, diaspora engagement, and others have local levels. Uh, even Jamaica, Haiti has a ministry of diaspora affairs, India and, and Israel. So my question to you is, there are like four categories, sub-ministry levels. We have a unit in Guyana um, at the ministry there. Are there plans to upgrade this to um, a greater organization, like a sub-ministry like many other countries have done to engage the diaspora effectively? And um, what are the plans for that? And the last part is, who is the subject matter expert on diaspora affairs that's advising the ministry or the government of Guyana, not the IOM. I'm talking about the expert in the area of migration policies and diaspora affairs that's advising um, Ms. Rasul, yourself, 
for the president of Ghana. Thank you. Last question. Uh, uh, Mr. Pazal, when you're done, I'd like to make a comment on, on those two questions too. Sorry, you're, I, I can't hear you. Oh, are you talking to me? Sorry. No, it was Mr. Prasad. I was, I was, oh, no, I was supposed to, yeah, I wanted to comment after he's done. You're, you're muted, Mr. Prasad. Still not hearing. Okay. All right, maybe I could say something really quickly because I, I know we have uh, Mr. Mr. Haynes has to say something before he moves out to another meeting. Um, just quickly in terms of the, of the advice. Now, one of the things we want to do for engagement and who's advising us basically, that is, that's, the, that's the purpose of all of these engagements. We are not just as restricting ourselves to one or to two individuals. We are meeting as many groups as possible. We're meeting as many individuals as possible who have spoken to us and based on the information that they give us from a wide cross section of the diaspora from all corners of the world. That's how we're, we come back to the table and then we, and then we you know, we make that decision in keeping or in alignment with national development priorities. So we're not restricting it to one person or, or to any particular individual because an idea doesn't necessarily mean that it has to come from a, a particular export. It's a very practical um, engagement, so to speak. So we are open um, on this. As a matter of fact, we have many persons that come and they give us information or they give us suggestions and ideas. And we welcome that again, as long as it's in keeping with the, um, with the government's development policy. Um, with respect to the unit evolving, I like that idea. However, and this is just, this is my opinion, strictly my opinion. I think that the unit prove itself um, that it is capable of doing certain things and it is yielding the results that the diaspora wants to see and the policymakers want to see. Then we can literally put a case up to say, you know what, let's consider the expansion of this unit into something even bigger than what it is right now. But I like to work on merits and also performance. So I would I would say let's give us some time. Let's just see how we evolve and how well we're performing in terms of that engagement. And then we can begin to talk about where the next step for this one here. Yeah. And definitely of course, we're like hold, you're going to hold us accountable to that to see how we're performing. Keisha, I know Mr. Haynes has to leave. So do you want to um, call on him? No problem. Uh, for those who were not able to ask their respective questions, please feel free to send a quick email to either Ms. Russell or the unit, and we'll do our best to get back to you as soon as possible. At this time, I'd like to call Mr. Floyd Haynes, president of the Roraima Institute to give us the closing. Uh, thank you, Keisha. Uh, Honorable Foreign Secretary, distinguished ambassadors, Rosalinda and team. Thank you all for putting on this event. It has been a most amazing thing to see <clears throat> this large gathering of Guyanese all of whom wanting to come back and help support the government. Um, this has probably been the most involved effort by any government um, since I've been around to involve and integrate um, Guyanese. And this is encouraging. It all started back in May, the first conference where we had both His Excellency, Dr. Ali and Dr. VP, Dr. Jagdio address the diaspora group. We've never had that before. Uh, this is followed up by this conference where Honorable Foreign Secretary Robert Prasad was also present. Uh, Rosalinda, you've done and are doing a yeoman's job. This is hard work. It isn't easy. It is a work in progress, but I am encouraged. And you know, just the testimonials of individuals um, who have gone back to Guyana and have been received well and supported by this unit says a lot. It says that Guyana is open for business and that the government is squarely behind this. So I wanna encourage each and every one of you to continue to seek out the unit, bring your talents, your skills, your know-how to Guyana and you will find a government that is accepting and receptive and is there ready to support you. Uh, I am an example of the government 
walking the walk. I am from the diaspora. I reside in Washington, DC, but I'm also on the local content panel that uh, the president uh, created back in uh, November of last year. And so here's a case of someone from the diaspora being actually involved uh, in the development and growth of the country. I also have several initiatives that I'm doing. So again, I wanna thank you all for putting this together. Um, it has been very successful from where I sit. And let's continue to do, to do the good work. And I encourage you all to bring your skills, talent, to make Guyana that we all love a better place. Thank you all for having me. And thank you all. Over to you, Keisha. <laughs> thank you. I just wanna apologize to Mr. Ford. Uh, the foreign secretary was having some technical issues. So he wasn't able to answer the rest of your question. But again, feel free to send us an email and we'll answer any questions and concerns. I'm seeing some more questions popping up in the chat. Um, we will do our best to address those. Uh, after this meeting. Thank you so much for giving us your time and attention and participating in today's webinar. We hope to see so many more of you involved in initiatives within Guyana and have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye everyone. Bye everyone. Bye. Thanks, have a great day. Hi everyone, take care, stay safe. Love you all. Thank you. Hi Mr. Russell, a lot of people are jumping off, I get to say hello. And I see Ambassador Hines there. Hello. Is Mr. William? Hi, Ambassador. Mr. Williams, are you still there? Ken Williams. Probably jumped off already. Mute. Yes, uh, good day to all, particularly to Ms. Razul and uh, uh, Robert, who may have gone off, and all the others. Uh, we're pleased here in Washington to participate in it. We have a number of older Guyanese in this area. I've been meeting with some of them. Uh, and one of them suggested to me that we should also look towards incre increasing the uh, socialization between Guyanese abroad here in the US. Uh, both to help each other here in the US and also hoping that the improved relationship here in the US, for example, between Queens and Brooklyn will feed back into Guyana and give us uh, uh, improved relations in Guyana also. Uh, those would be some of my uh, thoughts uh, for this meeting. Um, but let's, let's keep going. There's nothing like working day by day and gaining experience and reflecting on the experience and one gets steadily better. Uh, this is the way mankind has come along. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ambassador. We'll definitely be reaching out to you to collaborate on some of those initiatives.